Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, let's get started. Lately, one of my favorite talking points has been what to do when you're uninspired or when you just don't know where to start. Now, this video is going to be pretty similar to some other ones that I've done here on the channel already, but this is going to be more direct advice for how to get a good pattern going that you wouldn't normally come up with. So, it all starts with a, a basic, basic, basic drum pattern. We're using the PO32 tonic here. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, we count all uh, 16 of our steps as 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. That way it works across any 16-step uh, sequencer out there. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead. We've got our bass drum. I'm just gonna put it on 1 and 3. Snare drum's gonna go on 2 and 4. And as some of you probably guessed, yep, eighth notes on the hi-hat. Here we go. Doesn't get much simpler than that. So let's say you've got that going and, and you just don't know what to do next. We're gonna go into our snare drum. We're gonna turn on right mode so we can see where our steps are. We're gonna choose one step and we're gonna move it just one to the left or right. In this case, let's move it to the right. So off of beat two onto the E of beat two. Now let's listen. Now all of a sudden this is completely different than the pattern we just had and all we did was move one beat. Let's take that uh, one more step. So we're going to take it off of the E of 2 and put it on the AND. Let's do it again. Take it off the AND put it on the UH. Now at any point in this process if you hear something that you like, you can stop and use that as your pattern and start working around that. Um, or if you've already got some music written, you can kind of play it against that music and see if it lines up. So now let's take it off of the uh of two and put it right on the downbeat of uh, three. This will sound weird. Let's keep going. Take it off of the downbeat of three, put it on the E of three. That's pretty cool. Let's try it on the AND of three. I like that one too. And now let's put it on the UH of three. Now all of a sudden, put two here and we got fills going on. You know, there's a good drum fill. So let's take it off there. Let's put it on uh, the E of four, why not? And the and of four. And the uh of four. And just so we can complete this uh, cycle here, let's go and put it on the downbeat of beat one. That's got some power behind it with the bass drum and the snare lining up on beat one. All right, let's take it off one, put it on the E of one. That has kind of a nice uh, stutter feel. I want there to be like a reverse cymbal right in there after that first hit. Something like that, that'd be really cool. All right, let's move it to the end of one. Now to me, this pattern sounds like something that would be written to line up with a bass line that's already similar to this. And let's try it on the uh of one. This is actually uh, basically the universal pattern that we made uh, a while back and uh, just done in reverse. Very cool. So let's go ahead and put it back on two and four. Let's change up the bass drum. See what we can do with that. Let's just take it off of one, put it on the uh, E of one. These are gonna feel a lot more like double time because we're not messing with the snare drum. So having that snare drum consistently on two and four is gonna provide that full time feel that we uh, might be looking for. Let's uh, put it on the end of one. Okay, the uh of one. 
And at any time during this, like I said, you can also add in other notes. So if you want to put a bass drum back on one, then you have this. But for now, let's take it off. Let's try this on uh, the downbeat of two. Kind of a weird feel. Let's move it to the E of two. And the and. It's a really interesting thing because you start to notice how similar all of the patterns are to each other, even though something like this one sounds completely different than this. And probably way different than this. We'll move it to the uh, uh of two. That's very cool. I hear this. That's where that one wants to go in my head. So let's go ahead and put it, uh, take it off of the uh of two, put it on the E of three. That one screams drum intro to me. Put it on the and of three. Very basic. Put it on the uh of three. Let's move it to the downbeat of four. And to the E of four. To the and. I like that one a lot. And the uh. So now, in my head, I hear a snare drum on the and of one and then the downbeat of two. This is what I hear. I probably wouldn't have been able to come up with that pattern just, you know, straight, just going right into it. Uh, I would have eventually stumbled on it, but this is an easy way to get there. You can do this with the hi-hat too. You can kind of mess with things. What if we took the hi-hat off of all of the ands and put it on all of the uhs? So we have it on the downbeat and the uhs. There's no swing on this. It just feels like it. Isn't that weird? What if we take these off, off the downbeats, and put them on the E's? You know, and then as soon as you start messing with parameters, let's go to our snare drum again. Let's mess with this snare drum right here on the downbeat of two. some effects on there and you are off and jamming. Let's record some, why not? There we go. There is not a chance in hell that I could have come up with that on my own all possible thanks to just tweaking that same beat over and over and becoming familiar with where all the steps are and what they do. Now I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to hold the accent button. I'm going to put them on all of the E's and the U's. It's going to sound really funky. <laughs> Mute the bass drum. Mute the snare. Now it sounds like that one, it sounds like we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, but we're not. Those are the off beats, remember? Those are the E's and the U's. So when we release, sounds kind of trippy. 
The human brain processes rhythm in a very interesting way. Yeah, that sounds really nice. I like that a lot. Scoop the bass drum up, put it away. There we go. So uh, yeah, that's just uh, another way to kind of find inspirational patterns that you can jam on, uh, either to start your tracks or if you've written something, you wanna find something that works. It's also a great way, like I was just saying, to familiarize yourself with the different steps and how they work rhythmically with each other. The more that you practice playing around in the sequencer grid, the more you're gonna know what you want and how to get there. It's a, you know, practice makes perfect is, is not, just a, not just a useless adage. That is, that is the real deal. The more you play with your pocket operators, that sounds wrong, the more you practice with your pocket operators and music in general, the better you will get regardless of any training, professional or not. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, go ahead and leave a like on it. If not, you can hit the dislike button. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.